What's going on, everyone? This is Alex, USA Days. Uh, and I've been asked the question, how do we actually build a QA team from scratch? Like, what do you need to do in order to start the QA process in the company? Uh, so from my experience, every time I joined the jobs that I had, they were very fresh with the QA team. Uh, I had instances where I joined the QA team just of two people and the company grew and we kind of uh, build the QA team with it. So uh, from like st starters role to a lead role, I've had experience where I was the first QA that I joined and I um, grew into a lead role into a management position later, hired a lot of people. So essentially the whole QA team. Uh, and then uh, I've been in a position where I joined one of the first ones as well, uh, not in the QA management role, but more of a, lead role senior role but still doing all of the establishment of the QA processes uh, best practices documentation all that stuff so i have a little idea of uh, how to establish qa or at least from my experience i'm going to share with you so as a qa manager or if you're just the first qa engineer first thing you need to do is to start to think about the product uh, how do you want to test it right what kind of effort do you need and what kind of people will you need in order to be able to successfully verify it from release to release? Uh, is there a lot of like stuff that's already in place or you will need just a couple of people because the product is still being built uh, and you just need kind of uh, someone who will be able to learn the product as it being built so you can rely on them uh, testing it later. Uh, most of the time you'd be okay with just starting uh, with a few manual queue engineers, um, mid-level queue engineers. So they want to be able to do some like basic API verification. So maybe a little bit work of Postman. They don't have to really write code, but at least they have to be able to read it. You know, they have to be able to look into the networking dev tools and kind of see or in the console. Uh, to understand a little bit of the web if the web is your project or in the mobile um, so at least they can kind of look into the code not necessarily write it but at least understand a little bit of what is happening so a little bit of a postman uh, work with the console some networking tools and like basic Linux commands if that's something that is needed on your project so overall they have to have like a wide coverage for the uh environment that you will be using to understand at least at some level that you know how to work with it uh, so that's what you should be looking for now mid-level queue engineers again they're not necessarily gonna know how to code but at least you know they should be comfortable uh, with the tools and the environment that uh, you will have uh, in terms of uh, so it's going to be a good mix of soft skill right communication and like tech skill uh, not a senior level, but still. Uh, they also should be able to uh, create documentation and with their help, you will be starting the, the QA processes. So uh, creating the templates, how the bugs gonna look, uh, the process, how you're gonna create test cases or test matrices, where it's gonna be stored, um, what are gonna be, you know, uh, what are gonna be is the QA space where you go for the all how to and answers. Uh, start working on QA strategy in terms of uh, what kind of tools you want to support and use as a QA, where you're going to track all the progress for testing, how you're going to show the proof of the actual testing, right? And fails is going to be embedded with the tickets or you're going to have some test case management system. So all of that you can start building with the help of uh, the mid-level queue engineers now those positions uh they have like it's really about what you're gonna tell them to do and how you want it to be done but the positions you're looking for like for mid-level uh, they can be just QA analysis or uh, queue engineers ask engineers QA specialists even testers uh all of them mostly going to be manual you're going to rarely find actual like coders uh, with all those titles it doesn't matter if it's even queue engineer uh, normally the, a lot of the engineering part for the queue engineer comes from the experience knowing the product or uh, 
maybe specific niche that they worked with. So not necessarily coding skills, right? So if someone's coming from, let's say, Wi-Fi industry, they might be able to like open Wireshark, uh, go through the packets, understand uh, how the device is associated, stuff like that. Uh, maybe do some of the networking configuration, but not necessarily gonna they gonna open up uh, developer's code and start looking through the code, understanding what the code does. So uh, I just want you to be aware of that, right? So QA engineer not necessarily means that they're proficient in coding or even automation. Uh, once you've established some sort of a process for quality assurance, uh, you create a strategy document, understood what are your supported devices, and, uh, what are the areas, the core areas that you want the queue engineers to cover manually, what is the user flow that is important, uh, defined what would be P0 test cases, uh, what are the most important uh, things that you want to test first, right? So, and kind of um, established overall testing process, prioritize uh, on release, from release to release, what is being tested, what is being verified, um, how's the new features handled versus the regression test and all of that stuff. So once you have all this established, and this can be done with, again, mid-level queue engineers that can be very hands-on on the product, understand it both from the user's perspective um, and uh, from uh, QA perspective, right? Uh, you uh, should start thinking about hiring maybe like a couple of uh, QA engineers that do automation. So for automation specifically, if you're looking for automation QA engineers, I suggest the only titles that you look for uh, and research for are either senior QA devs or uh, QA automation engineers or as that. Uh, because again, as I said, if you're just gonna pick up QA specialists, SQ engineers, QA engineers, QA analysis, testers, uh, most of them are gonna be proficient in some sort of industry that they worked with, but not necessarily with automation tools or coding. Uh, so just be aware of that. And then you start working with automation team to actually creating uh, regression scenarios based on the core uh, user flows that are, you know, take time to produce that are robust and static. They don't update a lot and there's value in automating those. So every time there's a release, uh, the automation runs and you can be sure that the system still works as expected. Uh, yeah, so I think with that being said, uh, your goal, if you're just starting as a QA manager, uh, is to create culture of quality, right? To establish processes, to hire some people that first will be able to learn the product, understand the product, uh, and then hire some people more technical that will be able to automate some of the tests and the processes that were established uh, by your essential like first team. Uh, those roles are really separate. So again, manual key engineers should be doing manual staff, working with documentation, uh, tracking of test cases creation, and maybe working hands-on with the uh, the issues, the, the features that are in development. And then automation team should be working on the automation stack on the uh, on the regression test cases, making sure that once the product gets updated, the tests are get updated uh, with the product, so nothing fails. Uh, one thing that I want to mention also, when you're establishing QA team, think about separating QA from development. Um, if you will have your QA set up that it is reporting to the dev, uh, a lot of times you will find uh, conflicts between dev and QA just because they're different roles. So, and if you have development in charge, uh, many times it will kind of override overall the QA effort. So, you know, if development thinks that is priority it should go out, it's going to go out even there may be some like major critical issues found. Um, what, it, what it would be better that the QA actually reports to the same team that the product reports to, right? So, uh, whoever is over the product or even was work with the product. Uh, because again, with the direct report development, there could be potential conflicts on how to proceed and over time developer development team gonna kind of push it saying, hey, we, we need it out, right? We'll take care of uh, any issues later, but uh, so getting product out would oversee the getting quality product out. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, so establishing QA space, hiring QA engineers to help with documentation process, establishing best practices, creating test strategy, working on test cases, test plans, test matrices. Uh, once all of that is in place, uh, uh, with the QA tools that are being used, then add some uh, automation engineers to help the robust the system make make it you know uh, more automated in terms for test cases that are repetitive uh, and take long time to execute, but still you know they're doing the mission critical things, so they can't really fail. But just it takes a lot of time to run to the manually. Um, I think that's it. Uh, in the end, you know, a lot of times it boils down to hiring the right people. So the people that you're going to hire, you want them to understand the product, to be interested in the product, be interested in the growing it with the company. Uh, so soft skills plus the stack technical skills, or at least uh, showing that they are willing to learn and adapt if they never worked in this industry because uh, it's a completely different thing when you're testing, you know, um, some ticketing web page or whatever that might be on the web and then you're doing something on mobile or maybe you're doing some mix of hardware and software. Everything is really different when it comes uh, to testing. It just really depends on the industry and the end user. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that helps. This is just from my experience. Um, if you have your experience on how you were establishing QA team, sure, put it in the comments. Uh, be happy to read and to respond to it. Thanks, everyone. This was Alex USA Days, and bye.